In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Math Test 10, Section 4, Calculate Permitted. We're now on question 24. We're doing 24 through 26. The scatter plot above shows the number of registered voters, X, and the number of people who voted in the last election, Y, for seven districts in a town. A line of best fit for the data shown, which of the following could be the equation of the line of best fit. So remember, lines of best fit, these are basically just like trend lines. These are lines that are drawn to best approximate the data. And they're obviously they're lines, they're linear. We just have to find the equation. And so all we really have to do is just find the slope. And if you notice, um, it passes through the origin here. I know it's not zero, zero, but the origin is on this graph. Whenever you have a line that passes to the origin, there's no y-intercept. So you just have to find the slope and you're done. And uh, so I'm just going to take two points here. So for 1x, I have 120. And the y is 60. And then I'm going to go to this one. It's 140 and 70. And you can almost see, I mean, you can almost just estimate this without using the formula. But you could see, like, it, this is twice as much. This is twice as much. If you do another point here, it's twice as much. So. The change in y, it looks like every time x goes up by 20, then y goes up by 10. Okay, so think about the slope. That would just be 1 half. But we could use the formula as well if you want. So y2 over y, we did a problem like this in the last video. So 70 over <clears throat> 70 minus 60, that's going to be 10. 140 minus 120 is 20. So it's just 0.5. So, and it's upward, obviously, it's going up. And so the answer here is B. All right, let's take a look at 25 and 26. <clears throat> Excuse me. The system of equations above is grass graphed in the xy plane. What is the x coordinate of the intersection point xy of the system? And so sometimes you have questions like this. We saw a problem with no solutions where they're parallel, they don't intersect. So sometimes this question might be, what are, what's the solution? That just really means where the two lines cross they intersect and for this method I would probably recommend just using elimination it's a little bit um, it's, it's less bulky than and bulkier than substitution and so look to cancel out one of the variables we're solving for x so I'm gonna look to cancel out the y here's a negative 1.5 y here's a positive 0.5 so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna multiply this bottom equation by 3 right because that's gonna get positive 1.5 we can just add it together and they cancel out so I'm just multiplying the bottom equation so 3 times 16 is 48, so that's going to be 4.8x plus 1.5y. Again, you could use your calculator here, but um, these aren't too difficult. So 13 times 3, that's 39. So it's going to be negative 3.9. So now I just add the two, right? Here's the original. I just add them together. We know the middle ones are going to cancel out. And so this is going to be 7 point two x no y's and then here we have point three and then we have negative three point nine so that's gonna be negative three point six and you can see this is exactly half right and it's negative so x is gonna be negative point five all right one last question on this page we do number twenty six Keith modeled the growth over several hundred years of a tree population by estimating the number of trees pollen grains per square centimeter that were deposited each year within the layers of a lake's sediment. He estimated there were 310 pollen grains per square centimeter the first year the grains were deposited with a 1% annual increase in the number of grains per centimeter thereafter. Which of the following functions models P of T, the number of pollen grains per square centimeter T years after the first year the grains were deposited? And so this is, we had a question like this earlier, we're identifying if it's linear or exponential. 1% annual increase every year is going to be exponential, right? Because it's not a flat amount because each year with the 1% increase, the principal, the starting value gets bigger. You should recognize right away this, it, if you look at the choices, you just have to know the formula for exponential growth. And the P is always the original amount. The... Um, so we're told that the first year there are 310. So let's just review the formula for exponential growth. A lot of times they use like bank deposits. So P is like principal. And then it's one 
it's going to be a plus r or minus r depending on an increase or decrease. So this is the rate as the decimal. And let's say it's an annual rate of 5%. It'd be then 1.05. If it's annual, this t has to be a rate that's consistent with the growth rate. And so this was not a hard question. Again, if you know the formula, 310 is the original value. That's the p. We know it's an increase, so it's 1 plus. If it were a decrease, it's 1 minus. But it's 1 plus 0.01. That's 1% as a decimal, which is 1.01. And it's annual. As long as this exponent up here, this t, is annual, then it's totally fine. And we're told that t is the number of years. And so it is consistent. And it's simply d for this question.